Hello, I am Fiona Sitkin, a host of a talk show, The Bridge for Women Worldwide. And today I am hosting the 17th episode of The Bridge. Its topic is teaching French to American children. Teaching French in America is very critical as well as teaching any other foreign language. Why? Because our nation is in the middle of the mighty level national crisis and we need to take care of our children. Our children will do much better in life and career if they speak at least one additional language, a huge language, an important language like French, German, Spanish, Mandarin, and such. Plus, speaking more than one language has additional health benefits like faster stroke recovery and delayed onset of dementia. That's research. So stay with us, please. Let me say a few words about myself and our talk show. A professional educator and former Fulbright scholar I started the talk show based on my HuffPost blogs and a recent book, How They Made It in America, Success Stories and Strategies of Immigrant Women, from um, Isabella Leandra to Ivana Trump to fashion designer Josie Natori, plus more. This book features 18 out of 100 women interviewed for my books and blogs. And today, I will have a distinct honor to present Ansel Higa again, who may be one of the subjects of my next book. Welcome to our show, Ansel Higa. Hello. Hello, Fiona. Thank you so much for welcoming me. It's a great pleasure uh, to be part of your talk show, and I love the idea. Uh, thank you so much, and I'm happy to see you too, Ansel Higa. Dear viewers, ladies and gentlemen, let me present Anne-Sophie properly. Anne-Sophie Gagan is founder and head of the French American Academy, a private independent school with an innovative teaching methodology. Anne-Sophie worked for the European Commission before coming to America with her husband in 1999. Like many immigrants, she became entrepreneurial in America. She created a child-centered European-style school that uses dual lenses of French and English in everyday classes. I especially admire and sophie for pulling out this grand project while being a mother of four young kids. Four kids, no kidding. Isn't that wonderful? Well, Welcome again to our show, Anne Sophie. Thank you very much for the warm introduction. Let me let me ask you my first question. How did it all start? What brought you to become an education entrepreneur? Um, good question. So actually, I should say that it started as a personal story, and if we go back in time, and uh, we are in two thousand six have already three children who are attending um, American public school. And I'm expecting a fourth child, uh, a second baby girl, Maya. Ah. And she became a little bit my light and showing me a clear path because I could see the French feeding in my older uh, children. And if I wanted her to speak French, to be able to speak to her grandparents, if I wanted her to understand my culture, I really needed to do something. And here how the school idea started. Then I checked with other friends or families around me and uh -huh. discovered that many French families would be interested in a very bilingual school. And uh -huh. 2007, eight, it started. 25 students at the beginning, then 54, then 81, 122, and so on. And right. about 300 students. 
and it evolved into much more than just French community because we are welcoming 40 nationalities. Um, ah. Russian, Spanish, Mexican, Swedish, uh, Senegal, Haiti, everywhere. Uh, and that's, um, that's the, the story of the French American Academy. Yeah, great, great. I read that French American Academy has one school in New Milford location and the other one in Jersey City. Are you planning to expand at this time? I do have a few ideas of expansion. Um, when I started the school, uh, I knew I wanted a bilingual school up to eighth grade because to be fully bilingual, you need a long-term exposure. Uh, uh -huh. So we have achieved that goal and we have now an education up to eighth grade. But now that I'm searching for high schools with my little Maya who will be graduating, I'm contemplating maybe higher grades. Um, but in the nearer future, I'm also working on a teaching, uh, online teaching community platform. Uh, okay. I have seen over the 13 years of experience in education that there's definitely a need for meaningful, practical training session for teachers. Uh -huh well as a place where they could discuss uh, their ideas or their struggles um creating an online community might okay. be very helpful okay and lastly it goes hand in hand with the last um expansion we are working on is franchising the french american uh -huh. Because, okay. you know, in France, we have a national preschool curriculum, um, national right. elementary curriculum. Right. So a way to train teachers nationally. And I have a feeling that in this country, there's definitely a need for a safe, diverse, bilingual preschool environment. Uh-huh, uh-huh bringing meaningful uh, training session for teachers as well as preschool environment, I think it can boost the chances for a child to receive a strong education. Great, great, thank you. I like the idea of your school cultivating bilingual curriculum, critical thinking, and multicultural setting. Could you say something about how all this contributes to developing your students' talent? You, you use the right word, um, uh, Fiona, cultivating, because yes, we do- Cultivating. As a professional educator, I love the word cultivating. Yes, and I do love it too. Cultivating for us, cultivating diversity and inclusion, as well as individual talents. Right. And as a bilingual school, we really want our children to be open-minded, open accepting of others, regardless of their race, gender, situation, abilities. It's, um, it, it was a, a key element when I started the school is to open up the students to a wider world um, uh -huh. okay. more than just the 50 states of the uh, United States. Thank you. That all comes into cultivating, I understand. And um, uh, now that French American Academy is up and running, could you say just in a few words, what are the objectives? So our main goal is really to uh, have the children being fully bilingual in French and English. That means they can read, speak, write, count, think, dream in French or in English. Additionally, they can compare and contrast uh, the two languages, whether it's in grammar, but also history or traditions, um, current events. Uh, so really bring the two worlds together. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, could you please elaborate on three practical aspects that our audience may want to know about 
Um, and you may answer in any order you choose. Aspect one, bilingual team of teachers. Aspect two, a well-rounded curriculum. And aspect three, small class sizes, please. Yes, a bilingual team is essential uh, because we need uh, French native speakers. Right. Can you imagine if I was teaching English with my strong French accent? Oh, <laughs> that would be quite difficult for the children. So we really need French uh, native teachers to teach their own language and their culture. Uh, because with the language comes the culture and it's uh, we don't work, we don't behave, we don't speak, we don't have the same humor, we don't joke the same way. So it's important to uh, right. learn language from uh, a native speaker. Right. right. Uh, is, uh, is very important because we believe uh, in the whole child as well as the interdisciplinary project. And for yeah. example, in middle school, what really engage and motivates the students are the yearly big project uh, we implement. And this year, for example, they are preparing a musical. Uh -huh. For that musical, they write themselves the text. They are uh, composing the music. They are sewing, designing the costumes. They are learning in science how to make the lighting and how it works. They are, of course, performing. And if we are still in the pandemic, they probably will video um, the, the, the show uh, rather than performing on stage and edit it. So it's a project that uh, really reach out to many topics, subjects. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the last one you said, yes, small class size. Uh, yeah. Yes, because we, I come from a country where very often you see class size with 25, 28, 30 students. Yeah. And I believe it's a proper way to uh, raise children. So we do believe in small class size. Our teacher-student ratio can come from one to four, five to one to eight, ten. But that uh -huh. a teacher can get to know his her student. Uh, we need that personal connection to make them grow to their full potential. Uh huh. Thank you. That's great. Well, apart from teaching English and French and some other subjects. How do you use the French and the American approaches in STEM projects? International rankings show that the French schools and students excel in mathematics, physics, etc. Could we prepare our American kids to be more competitive? Um, that's true that the math curriculum is different and it's interesting to notice that the Americans are focusing a lot more than the French on fractions and they even start fraction at the early age with the slice of pizzas to, to, to cut. Uh -huh. The French curriculum is uh, way stronger on geometry and ah. are designing and building figures. And I do believe that the two approaches are, are, are good. What is fascinating in bilingualism, it's like giving a bigger toolbox to our children. Uh -huh. More strategies so they can think deeper. We, we use in our school an approach developed by Michael Fuyan called the six T's. Uh -huh. Competencies that the children uh, uh, need to acquire to be successful and happy in the 21st century. Uh -huh. And those competencies are across all subjects. This one is collaboration. Uh -huh. I don't think we ever work by ourselves now. We always work in a team, with a team. So to learn how to cooperate, I think it's key. Communication. Uh, communication, if you have the best idea, but you don't know how to clearly express 
uh, your ideas or feelings, you can be misunderstood or miss an opportunity. So, uh, right. that's important. Creativity. Uh, and creativity beside the arts we can think about, which are important. Creativity to us also means thinking out of the box. Um, yes. Looking at different point of view to find a solution. Right. It's me to the four C's, critical thinking. You mentioned it. Yes. We want our students to be problem solvers. Uh -huh. Looking at the dual lenses of French and English is, uh, is uh, wonderful for them. Uh, they, they can really analyze, sensitize um, from different point of view. Uh -huh. It used to be just four C's a few years ago, but now I think, especially nowadays, they added two C's. One is character. Ah. Uh. To be strong in math, reading, writing, but if we miss the compassion, the empathy, uh, we'll miss something. So we want also to develop strong character in our children. Right. Means uh, developing grit and perseverance, uh, uh -huh. them opportunity to take risk and uh, to develop, yes, compassion and empathy. Yes. And last one as a closure is citizenship because uh. OC is to bring citizens of the world, of course, yes. charitable, conscious of the environment as well. They are the young generation and they are much more aware of climate change than maybe the older generation and they know that they need to have an impact on it. Right. So those six C's are also very important in our approach. Very interesting. I see you are making the be your best in connecting and taking the best from the American system of education and the fresh French system of education, which are enormously different across the pond. So I'm happy that you are doing this for the kids. Thanks. Um, you know what, Anne Sophie? Um, I know your students are learning about two cultures. How are you doing this? So we are really building bridges with the two languages as often as possible and it's um, exciting to look for example in social studies at history through again the dual perspective uh, to study the american revolution uh, in perspective of the french revolution uh -huh. that's very helpful what are similar what is different or we can also go into the topic of immigration and slavery and I would give also an example. For example, uh, we could give to a child a question, the same question in English or French. Let's say, uh, why the sky is blue? Uh -huh. And the English class may give a multiple choice answer sheet to answer the question, while the French teacher may give just a blank sheet to answer why the sky is blue, having given the tool to the child that they know how to write an essay with uh, reason and organization. And here I'm not judging what system is best uh, yeah. on the multiple choice question or the blank essay. I'm just telling that in our school, we want the kids to manage, master both approaches. Yeah, that's great, that's great. Yeah, of course, every mother loves to have her kids knowledgeable of European and American civilizations and master the two approaches. So thank you for doing that. Um, I would like now to show several pictures and ask you to comment on them. Yes, please comment. This is about the history of your school. Yes, and how it's also about the achievements and you know as French uh, we are very reserved uh, and have trouble to to shine or show off 
but I should admit that I was uh, very honored to receive an award from the directly from the Minister of Education, Monsieur Blanquer, Jean-Michel Blanquer, for my years and my input into education. So, uh -huh. uh, and that's the Minister of France Education, right? Is the minister, yes, in France, uh, uh -huh. visiting New York, and uh, during his visit, he wanted to uh, congratulate some people uh, for their impact on the French education and French language, and he, I was receiving this award from him directly. Uh -huh. So that was a great honor, because... Uh, of course. Yeah, to to have it directly from the, the big chief of education in France. Uh -huh. it's beautiful. And the picture is with those students. And on this picture, you have students who started the school with me 12 years ago. Uh, they are graduates from last June. So uh -huh. it's heartwarming to see their faces because uh, the middle school was our last um, growing uh, division and uh -huh. addition, you can see on the picture among the children the french ambassador to the united states Philippe yes Etienne, yes here. and the other lady is the french consul and claire legendre so they took the time to come visit our school to uh, learn about new jersey and they spent both about an hour answering questions from the students and explaining their role in uh, the diplomatic world. So it was um, a very heartwarming uh, moment uh, last year, just before the school had to shut down as many schools. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, teaching French in America is a tall order. What can you say about these pictures or that picture, please? And this picture is in front of our campus in Jersey City. As you said, uh, we have also another campus in uh, Bergen County. One is in an uh, urban environment. New Milford is among grass and trees, um, just across the George Washington Bridge. And Anne-Claire Legendre um, moved to uh, Dubai. She became the French ambassador to Dubai. But we welcomed just recently, last month, Jeremy Robert, who is the new consul of New York City. And we were very happy to introduce him to New Jersey and to the French American Academy. So that was uh -huh. a good moment. But as you see, sanitary protocol has uh, changed. And he was outside the school and we were wearing masks. But we are so happy to have our children in the school. Uh, that was a big um effort over the summer to work with the task force and to welcome children in school mm -hmm. so we've done remotely uh, last semester it's so much um joyful for the children to be together with the teachers yeah this is a great achievement as a matter of fact not every school has it well um i, I am happy that your school is recognized by French and American authorities, and the children grow up open-minded and inclusive of all cultures, religions, ideas, and so on and so forth. Yeah, that's great. Now, um, let us talk about the values now. Um, what enabled you to do what you did? You know, in my recent book, How They Made It in America, I distilled the common denominators of successful immigrant women and described seven success values. And I am now wondering um, which may be your personal uh, background values, your guiding stars on the road to success. Could you share, please? And, you may want to take two of these or add your own, please. Um, thank you, Fiona. I, I would say the first one, perseverance, is definitely a, a key one. Um, and starting a school from scratch, uh, it's not easy. Uh, it feels like it, but uh, you go through a lot of hurdles 
And I can still remember when I asked two friends, one French, one American, to be the board members of the first school. And they looked at me, I was eight months pregnant, and they thought afterwards, oh, we can't contradict a pregnant woman. So let's say yes to her, we'll see from there. Ah. And 13 years later, they can't believe uh, what um, uh, path we, we achieved. But uh, as you said, we made it in America, but through efforts. Uh, down the road, uh, it was not always easy from this, I started the school, for example, in 2007, and I was building um, the project on fundraising, feeling, oh, this country is magnificent for fundraising. I will have lower attrition because I can raise funds. And boom, 2008 hit the financial crisis. So no one was willing to donate uh, any funds. So uh. you to revamp your project and look at different uh, options. I remember in 2010 when our landlord uh, told us, actually, I don't want you anymore in the building. I prefer a public organization that might be safer. And the funny thing is that the organization it was closed where our school was thriving. But in just a few months, we had to find a new building for our community. Mm. But easy, um, and I could keep uh, on and on. But yes, perseverance, and to always believe in what you do, and to do it with passion, that will overcome the uh, obstacles. That, that I understand. Yes, I understand. Yeah. Per perseverance is probably number one, especially for a pioneering project like yours, French American Academy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and I would say the, it goes with the American mindset, because as you said at the beginning, uh, I'm not coming from the education world at the beginning. And America is a land of opportunity. Uh, and I, I, I was welcomed by those two board members where, okay, if you want to do it, do it. Well, maybe in France, I have more like, oh, it's impossible, or look at all the difficulties. Here, there is a spirit of go for it, do it, uh, manage your passion, and you'll find the, the, the tools. So that um, land of opportunity, that energy you can find uh, in the United States, hope it stays like that, but it was very helpful uh, to get mm -hmm. that. Yes, thank you so much for sharing your values. Yours is an amazing story of serious success in the U.S. And um, it has many lessons for me and for our viewers as well, I'm sure. A round of applause for Anthony, please. Clap, clap, clap. Um, thank you uh, so much, Fiona. Thank you so much for, for sharing what you did. Um, now, uh, let us look at our takeaways from today's show. I would recommend three takeaways for our students and viewers. One, teaching our kids to be bilingual and respect our cultures and other cultures prepares them for global career opportunities. Two, Anne-Sophie Gagan is a model intercultural entrepreneur. And three, Order the book, How They Made It in America, to learn more about how to be a success in the U.S. And finally, let's connect. You can ask any questions on YouTube under discussion. And you can also write directly to me, fiona.sitkin at gmail.com. And finally, you can reach out to me via my website, www.fionasitkin.com. So this is fionasitkin.com. Um, thank you so much for watching us. And uh, I would love to see you again. And um, Anne Sophie and I are very grateful to you for watching us.
Um, I salute you and uh, please subscribe to our channel. And bye-bye. Uh, thank you, Fiona.